<clears throat> Hello everyone, welcome back to another view, and this time I'm going to be taking a look at Salem's Lot, the made-for-TV miniseries directed by Toby Hooper, written by Paul Monash, starring David Soul, James Martian, Lance Kerwin, Bonnie Bedelia, and Lou Eris. <clears throat> Alright, made this review short and sweet, to the point. This movie was really damn good. Um, I'm not a really big fan of vampire movies, but this is this is one of the good ones. And I totally agree with the statement how this how people consider this to be the last great gothic vampire movie because it really is. Uh, Toby Hooper, his name should be recognizable to all horror fans, and he directed this film. And his directing of the, his directing in this movie is very, very heavily inspired by Alfred Hitchcock, and it's perfect. <clears throat> he gives this movie that perfect visual tone that it needs. The atmosphere is amazing. The suspense is done very, very well. The tension is done exquisitely well as well. The acting from everyone in the cast is rock solid. Really, really good. Uh, David Soul as Ben Mears is one of the standouts to me. He does a great job. Uh, ben Mears is, is like this uh, writer who returns to Salem's Lot, but he was also a former... <clears throat> he lived there in a pre previously as a child, but some weird shit happened when he was a kid that forced him to leave. <clears throat> and I like his character a lot. Um, he's the good guy at the piece. And he does a really good job. Um, Ned Flanders in this, is in this movie. He plays the, uh, the uh, father of his girlfriend, who's played by Bonnie Bedelia. And both Bonnie and Ned Flanders are also exceptionally well. Uh, I really like the the romantic, uh, the romantic <coughs> development between Ben and uh, the character Susan, who is played by Bonnie <coughs> Bedelia. At first, their uh, their stuff was kind of clunky at first, but as the movie progressed, they got much more natural, and their chemistry really shined through. So, it's a plus for me. Uh, I like James Mason, who plays this guy called Richard Stryker, and Mason, you can tell that he's relishing in this role. He's enjoying the role he's, that he's playing, and he plays a really good, you know, slimy, creepy guy, but very aristocratic and uh, proper as well. He does a really good job of balancing those two characteristics for this character of uh, Richard Strucker and this James Mason did a superb job. Love it a lot. <clears throat> uh, Lance Kerman plays his child called Mark, and I like the parallels that Mark and Ben have. You know, they're both writers. Um, they both had you know trauma happen to them when they were kids. Of course, Mark is still a kid. He had a trauma that happened, but also parallels. Ben's trauma that he has as a kid because they both involve something that happened to their parents which I thought was really brilliantly done and a good way to parallel two characters that don't really share a whole lot of screen time until pretty much the, the final couple minutes of the movie where they're when they're fighting <clears throat> and they're in this haunted house this house called the Matcheson house which is a the classic haunted house you know I like the whole look of it especially the inside it's, it, lo it looks grimy it looks run down, destroyed. It's that perfect, you know, haunted house that's smack dab in the middle of a suburban neighborhood and you look at it and you wonder what the hell happened in this in this house to make it look so creepy. <clears throat> Love it. <clears throat> Love the whole production design of this movie. It looks fantastic. And as I said, this movie is completely atmospheric. And it has a lot to do with the music and Toby Hooper's direction and the acting and the practical effects, the makeup effects. This movie looks pretty damn good, especially for a TV movie made in the 70s. It looks fairly, fairly well done, and I give it a lot of give that a lot of credit to the to the, to the production team. Uh, this movie has also has a lot of uh, really creepy scenes. I wouldn't call them scary scenes, but a lot of creepy scenes. Uh, to me, the, the scenes that really stand out is we have like these kids, these who were turned into vampires, just floating outside of windows. And it's like, you look at that, and you're just like, oh, shit. It's good stuff. I really like it a lot. Uh, there are some, you know, instances where a lot of the actors could be uh, clearly overacting. Uh, and and it, it, it could come across as very cheesy in some areas for an overall movie where everyone plays it straight. But uh, you do get a lot of that... Uh, Overacting with some scenes, especially they got this one guy who's in a jail cell. He sees a vampire, and he just does a face like, oh. it's like, come on, guy Pierce, come on, a little naturalistic. And then you got this uh, other character who's like, teacher, teacher. 
Okay, again, it can come across as kind of hokey and as Aries, but still, but you, but you don't get lost, which is what I appreciate. You, you still, you're still invested in the story that's being told, and the story being told is that these guys of Barlow and Strucker are in this town. They have an antique shop, <clears throat> but they're really converting this entire town of Savings Lot into a vamp, turning everyone to vampires. And Ben Mears essentially has to stop them, which he eventually does. And speaking of the character Kurt Burlow, I like the look of Kurt Burlow. It's it's heavily inspired by Nosferatu. I like the whole look of the elongated teeth, you know, his theatrical... He's been, like, of course, the, the character of Barlow's barely in the movie. You don't see him to like, the very, very... Like the last hour, but he has that a look that you just can't get away from. Again, they got those long teeth, and his poses are very theatrical, like when he's and it. The actor Reggie uh, Nelder, who played Barlow, did a real good job of making him stand out. <clears throat> so I can appreciate that. <clears throat> appreciate that a lot. Um, I like the whole. I like the whole last half of this movie where it takes place inside this house. And then, it take, and then, you know, they defeat Barlow, of course. No, well, <clears throat> Ben and uh, Mark defeat Barlow. Unfortunately, Susan is presumably killed inside the house. But we find out in another ending that she was actually turned into a vampire. And I like the whole thing of uh, Ben doing the sacrificial kill on Susan. And you see that dread, but you also see that he had to do it because <clears throat> it's either kill or be killed when you're messing with vampires. Mm, yeah, so overall, I enjoyed this movie tremendously. I thought I think it was again, the atmosphere is fantastic. The pacing, you know, it's it's a slow build, but it's but it works because you have a lot of characters in this movie, and you got to develop these characters. You got to develop the storylines between these characters and the subplots between these characters. And everything's got to flow in, and everything's got to flow in a very natural way. And to me, this movie does a good job of making everything flow in a natural way. There's a lot of relationships that develop in this movie that I actually really like. <clears throat> in addition to the romantic relationship, I also like the relationship between Ben and this character of Jason Burke, who was Ben's old teacher. And I like that whole, you know, student-mentor relationship that happens between the two, and that neutral respect between the two. The same thing with, you know, Ned Flan with Ed Flanders' character in Ben and uh, David Soul's character. I like the neutral respect that developed between the two since Ben is dating his daughter. I like that they don't have an anti they don't have an antagonistic relationship. They have a respectful relationship, and I liked all that. I like how I like how all that develops, and I like how you, you we grown to care about these people, and we see them get killed off. We're like, oh man, why? These are, these are good guys that you don't that you want to see pull get pulled through. You want to see David, you know, help. You, you want to see Ben, you know, help these help this little town and try and save it. Unfortunately, he has to save it by destroying it, by purifying it, by fire. The only way to, <clears throat> which is what he does when he torches the house, you know, the fire spreads throughout the town and pretty much it's implied that it burns it all down and purifies it was banned by a plague. However, <clears throat> they also mention that, you know, the others will flee, meaning the other vampires will flee, which is what eventually does happen because they end up tracking down Ben and Mark to Guatemala, which is where he kills off Bonnie Belinda's character. So yeah, <clears throat> overall, Again, this is a very enjoyable movie. I love Toby Hooper's direction. He does a great job. The acting is solid. A lot of good performances. Good production value. Solid special, um, solid special effects. And of course, the masses in house to me. Once again, that classic haunted house that you just, or that you just marvel at, and just wanting to know more of the history behind it. <clears throat> so yeah, overall, I'm giving Salem's Lot solid eight out of ten. This is one of the one of the better vampire movies to be made in a very very long time. Even though this movie came out in '78, not a whole lot of vampire movies can touch it. That's how to me that's how good it is. And of course, again, Toby Hooper is a master of horror. This the guy that brought us to Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Poltergeist. So yeah, this is one of the good ones, and definitely check it out if you haven't. <clears throat> well, I'm AJ Legend. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll check it back next time for more.